I am now. Yeah, so now we're both on. We're both recording. I'm just, it's always interesting when the government records me back. I'm a reporter and I'm just looking to report on family court related cases involving criminal courts and the district attorney's policies and procedures. This is Susan Bassey and we're starting this video in Yolo County in the district attorney's office. The district attorney that is charged with criminal prosecutions and public safety issues, especially as it relates to domestic violence. And we're gonna show you the difference between asking for records in this district attorney's office and in a police department, records related to domestic violence, and how such issues are handled by police and the government attorneys and private attorneys in family court. Um, I wanna get some records from victim services. Procedures that I'm interested in looking at is how victim services handles family law related cases. Every year, state and federal governments spend hundreds of millions of dollars in the name of prosecuting and protecting people in domestic violence cases. And yet, despite all of this money being spent, we find that police officers are not properly trained. Prosecutors often prosecute false claims of domestic violence more often than they prosecute actual and real claims. And we find that everybody is directed back to family court where they are required to pay for a private divorce attorney to either prosecute or defend domestic violence in a civil matter because prosecutors in counties all across the state are claiming that they don't have enough money to prosecute domestic violence in criminal court. Uh, actually, I don't want to sit. I've been sitting all day to drive. Uh, I'm requesting some records. Okay. I need to get some records. Okay. In order to receive records, you have to uh, fill out a records request form. Actually, I don't. The law says that I can just ask for records verbally. I don't have to identify, and I just can ask for the records. So the first thing that I'm asking for, you should be able to have, and what I'm looking for is a roster of all the district attorney employees, especially specifically victim services. If you've watched my videos, you know that I try to use the law in California that provides the public to walk into any public agency and access, inspect, and copy public records. But as these agencies have staff that are untrained, conceal these records in databases, or simply refuse to comply with the law, we have a very difficult time even getting their policies and their rosters of that agency. And then I am looking at the issue of victim services and the policies and procedures related to cases involving family law cases. In 2017, a father was arrested in the courtroom of Judge James Towery. He was charged with domestic violence and child abuse, felony charges. And the district attorney's victim services office referred the mother in that case to two private attorneys, Elise Mitchell and Nicole Ford, both attorneys who are regularly appointed as minors counsel and seem to be getting an exorbitant number of referrals, not only from the district attorney, but from a nonprofit by the name of Women SV. And we've been reporting on all of these issues, and we're going to explain why that's important, because now the founder of Women SV is training police officers in California, including police officers on college campuses. Uh, criminal courts are happening in each county. Okay, let me see if I can find somebody that would be able to assist you. With okay. okay, thank you. Very well. Anyone who's ever been involved in a court case, whether it's criminal court or a family court case, where police officers are involved, you will often hear a police officer claim that they are testifying based on their training and their experience. And this is a dive into exactly what that experience for police officers really is and how those police officers are handled by prosecutors. And I'd like to get some records. It's really simple and they should be available. I'm just asking for a roster of the DA staff and everybody that's employed here, including in victim services. And I'm asking for the policies and procedures as it relates 
to addressing crimes that arise out of family court cases. I am unable to produce those on the spot, and we have 10 days to respond to that. Okay, so if you'd like to look up the law, it's Government Code 62. Okay. I can't do something for you that I'm simply unable to do. So. If you're unable to do it, it doesn't make it lawful. The law says okay. that I have a right to walk in in normal business hours and access and inspect records. Obviously, if I were asking for something that was in some kind of database that you couldn't access, I'm asking for a staff directory of DA employees. We have 10 days to respond. No, you don't. You, I'm asking for access to that record to inspect well, it right it now. It seem like we're at impasse here, so unless you have any other questions, I'm going to go ahead and... Okay, so again, your name is? David Marshall. Here. And you are what position here? The Assistant Chief Investigator. The certification and training, as well as the pay of police officers, including plainclothes district attorney investigators, is posted online or is publicly available through public records requests. And David Marshall makes nearly $500,000 a year as a DA investigator. Okay, so you're a DA investigator, mm -hmm. so you're not an attorney? I am not. Okay, uh, I'd like to speak to your supervisor, please. Uh, he's not present. Who is that? John Kirk. I need his name and his his uh, contact information. Okay. His name is John Erk. What's his email? Uh, John Erk. John Erk at Yolo County. How do you spell that? E H R K. It was interesting that John Erk, who manages and supervises this DA investigator, makes significantly less in pay and benefits. And his phone number? Six five three zero six six six. 8180. Okay. I'm formally making a complaint that you're non-compliant with California's Public Records Act. You're a government attorney's office. I'm asking to simply inspect policies and procedures and the roster of the DA's office. Okay. Thank you. And you didn't comply with the law when I asked for it. Okay. Thank you. After the district attorney's office in Yolo County, led by Jeff Russick, who's been in office since 2015, refused to comply with the law, even to give us a basic staff directory, we headed over to the Davis Police Department. And in Davis, there is a large public university, University of California at Davis, where there is a Davis Police Department to manage the public safety and law enforcement issues on campus. And then there is the Davis Police Department that manages the issues related to public safety and crime off campus, including that might involve professors, students, and others who live in off-campus housing. Uh, yeah, I just need to come in and get some records. Okay, I can have you come in to fill out the application. Go ahead and pull them the right hand side. Hi. Hello. Not police records. Oh, okay. Public records. Oh, okay. No problem. And I just want to verbally request them. And one of them you might be able to give me now. I'm asking under the government code 6253A. I just want to get a roster of the police, um, everybody employed in the police department. Okay. And how would you like to receive the response? Let me start with that. Well, I'd like to access and inspect the roster right now and take a copy of it if I want under the government code. Okay. I don't and, have that readily available. Okay. I can have them uh, respond to you with the official response. Okay, so you can call your supervisor if you want. I'm not asking under the 10-day uh, requirement. I'm asking under the access rule. I just want a roster of the police department staff. That's all I'm asking for. Okay. And then I'm going to ask for, then I'll do a formal request for the 10-day wait of policies and procedures and other things that I'm looking for. Okay, for the 10-day one, what were you looking to request? Oh, okay. Well, if you want to take it right now, I want all the policies and procedures of the department. And let me tell you what I'm investigating so that you, there might be records that I don't know exist that exist, but I'm, I'm looking specifically for calls related to domestic violence and the policies and procedures of the police department in handling those cases. And I'm specifically looking at how it's handled when the police officers become aware that there's a family court case involved. 
meaning a child custody or a divorce case. Yeah, and that's I'll perfect. That. How would you like to receive the response? I'll give you my email account. Go for it. it Let me give her a call. And you know what? You rock. Yeah. You, you've done everything perfectly. Oh, thank you. You're so sweet. I literally was just at the district attorney's office in Yolo County. They put me on body cams and they made it a federal offense that I was asking for records. Uh, that's your DA in okay. Yolo County. Well, let me call over and see if I can get our my supervisor out for the roster. Give me one sec. And this employee in the Davis Police Department did her job, complied with the law, and so did her supervisor. And what happened next was the supervisor came out and actually gave us immediate access to the records we were requesting. I just, I have horrible eyesight and I'm not very good at doing this. I'm trying to get to our, everything's blocked. Let's see if I can even get to our city website here. Or if it'll only let me get to the parking portal. Ah, here we go. So we're on our city website, and you go to staff directory. Uh huh. And you can filter here to police department. You guys rock. And all of our staff are listed here with their title. And the phone number. And their phone number. You literally and rock. And you can actually email them from here if you need to contact someone. Perfect. Okay. That is all I need. And I think you also requested policies. I did. Are they all online? Okay. So if you go to police department, administration, and department manual, and I believe patrol operations. Yeah. Are. Do you have it on anything specific related to responding to domestic violence calls? Mm, let's see. If those aren't online, I can certainly take a look and see what I can send you. I okay. She yeah, she gave request. me, I gave the email. And I just want to tell you that I do records requests to law enforcement all over the state. Mm -hmm. And Davis has always been my favorite. So I'm so glad you guys rocked this request too. Oh, no problem. Not only did the Davis Police Department comply with the law and give me immediate access to their staff roster. By the time I got back from my two-hour drive, they had delivered their policies and procedures to my email account that they had not been able to give me in the office that day. And these policies and procedures are so important that we're going to go over them in a separate video so that everybody understands the relationship between police, family court, and the prosecutor. I'm glad to help. Um, and if I don't see it on here, most of them are online. We do have some that may not be, but um, if I can't find it here, I will certainly send it. And, and specifically, and this may be more of an informal policy that I might need records like memos or things like that on, I'm specifically looking for when law enforcement finds out that there is a divorce or custody case going on, a family law issue related to a call that they're on. It may not, there may not be policies that get that specific. I'm sure there are certain laws that deal with thing like, things like that, but there may not be a policy that gets that specific. The policies are usually on teaching police officers how to identify a dominant aggressor. That's oh, one of the things. There, there may be some. I have all that. the post trainings mm -hmm. and I've been following how police officers are being trained on yeah. domestic violence. And so. There are trainings. We do put our training online as well, training materials. Okay, and I have a question too that you might know the answer to. When you are hiring police officers, is it in your policies and procedures to review their family law, um, any potential family law cases where there may have been allegations of domestic violence? Um, I don't know that specific, but I can have somebody get back to you on okay. that. Okay, Maddock and Family Court. So, okay, I just wanna get this. What is your name? Jean. Jean, you are my hero today, thank you very I'm much. I'm glad I could help. And um, I'm and very...
from our smallest cities to our biggest towns, how police officers, prosecutors, and family courts handle these cases is a matter of public interest. And we're going to talk about that some more in some of our upcoming videos.